All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone is doing well. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Shout out to all the subscribers. Big up to anybody new locked in. Let's talk about Michelle Rivera talking about Subriel Matias, calling him out, saying he would give him his first loss in his hometown of Puerto Rico, saying that, you know, no good uh, elite fighter or top fighter would take the kind of money that they're offering him. And it's reportedly, well, at least... Rivera claims that they're offering like 80 grand, which is, to be honest, that's, that is insulting if that's true. But let's talk about stylistically about the actual fight if it does get made, because it sounds like Rivera is willing to do this wherever, he said. And it's a pretty good fight, okay? Um, he's just coming off a pretty good win against Lipaness, who, to be honest, is getting on a little bit you know he's looking a bit slow but nonetheless it was a decent performance but if you look closely at that performance at least you know from my opinion he was working quite hard to look he boxed nicely Rivera don't get me wrong and he's he's moved up he's moved up in weight and obviously look let's not forget he had the P he got popped dirty for you know PDs right after the Martin fight so let's not forget about that so but he did look he did look well but he looked like he was working a little bit harder than you know someone that can just outbox a pressure fighter like that you know he he's decent with the jab and he his movement was good and he was he had some nice boxing moves he had some good defense but what i felt like he lacked in is the ability to clinch and hold properly, you know, or do the little cute things to keep somebody like Matias off you, you know, Lipanesk is, is not Subaru Matias, and what I'm actually making a video on Matias's punch technique, and I'll talk about his footwork in that as well, because that's something that I really like to talk about, I'm very passionate about, if you're new to the channel, and uh, it's going to be like a scientific view on Subaru Matias punch technique, because there are like some interesting, uh, he kind of defies science, really, because I don't understand it. Sometimes he he throws these punches that, whilst he's moving as well, whilst his feet aren't really set, and he still ends up knocking people out. It's amazing. But we're going to talk about that in, in another video, maybe later this week. But my point was, if Rivera gets to the point where and he's not going to be able to really keep Matias off of him, right? And there's going to be a point where he's going to... Ha you have to fight Matias. This is the thing. You have to fight him. At some point, you can't just dance around and outbox him. Yeah, you probably can for a bit. It would probably be similar to Plant Benavidez, but more violent, I think, you know? I, think, I don't think Rivera is as clean of a boxer as Plant, so... He'd probably win some early rounds, and then when that gas tank starts to drop and Matia starts to smoke, and then you can't keep him off of you. And when you're trying to grapple him, he's able to land these shots whilst going backwards, whilst without his feet on the ground. Like I just said, it's really quite remarkable. So I would, I would, I personally wouldn't see Rivera coming out of that fight. I don't think he'd make it to the final bell. There's a lot of people saying that you know he's he's a better boxer than Rodriguez, and he could outbox him. Look probably that's probably true he's probably a better boxer he would have to have a performance of his lifetime i think and he'd have to be in absolutely sensational shape and i say that when you're fighting somebody like matias when you're fighting these pressure fighters benavidez you know tim zoo uh bet after better Biev, you need to take yourself spiritually to a dark place in training camp all right you need to be able to go through hell and back to prepare for hell <laughs> all right because you know, it just that's the kind of energy you need to put out. You need to be able to flash your punches a lot harder. You need to be able to manage the fight. You need to be able to slow the fight down. You need to be, you know, there's so much you have to do to keep this guy off of you. It's like uh, that scene in Above the Rim where he's like, get off me. <laughs> you know, you just want someone just to get off you. And that's going to be like, he's going to be swarming him. He's going to be on him. And by the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth round, his energy bar drops and as I've said time and time again, when an energy bar drops on a fighter and that's that the 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 the, the tempo starts to change, fighters like Matias feed off of that. Okay, they feed off of fear and they get it energizes them. Their energy bar goes down and Matias's goes up, and then you know, that's it. But it's an interesting fight. You know, I really I, I hope that we can get an announcement soon for this fight because I, I you know. It, I don't know what's holding it up. Perhaps it is money, but I can't imagine that they're offering him 80 grand. That's an insult, really. Let's be honest. That's insulting because you're not getting you're not you're not getting you're not getting 80 grand out of that. You're probably getting 40, 
40 grand after you pay the taxes, after you pay your trainers. I, I, I saw Mikey Garcia talk about um, a fight that's, you know, a fight that gets a million. You know, when you hear a million and you're like, wow, well done, that's amazing, that's life changing money. Well, cut that in half for taxes. <laughs> then you've got your trainer fee, your manager fee. You probably end up walking with about 360, I think he said, something like that. So still, no, it's pretty good money in terms of a one-time check, of course, and you could do something good with that, but you got to get, to, to, to fight Matias, you, you, you know where you're taking yourself. You know, even if you do win, you're gonna take, he's gonna take a piece of you. There's not, your, your, your whole soul isn't coming out intact in that, in that fight. I'm telling you, you've gotta be a, an elite boxer, a pure boxer, I've said this for a long time. I might be wrong, but I'll see what happens. If Devin Haney does eventually fight him, it's gotta to be to that skill level. And Rivera's not quite there yet, you know? Yeah, he can move a little gracefully, and yeah, he can box nicely, you know what I mean? But it's not nice enough for me. It's not not. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you think he would just get destroyed. I mean, if you think he actually has a legitimate chance of outboxing it, I want to be objective about the situation because you, when you can't, you know, when you are in the clinches, and like I said, you got to fight someone. And there was actually a uh, um, round five against Lipanes, right? Um, there was a moment where Lipanes landed a couple of shots and it, it buzzed Rivera for sure. And he started holding. He didn't really know how to hold. He got him in a headlock. And the ref actually stopped the momentum of that fight. And um, Breadman was talking about it, you know, Caleb Plant's trainer. He's like, ah, oh, the ref, what's he doing? You know, because they, they, they stopped the momentum. But in that moment, he was like, panicking and just grabbing him you you can't just panic and grab anywhere you need it's a skill to hold someone and clinch them you got to shut them down all right you need to be assertive with it you need to know what you're doing and it didn't really seem like Rivera knew, knew what he was doing and against Frank Martin right a fight where that was a great fight in terms of the matchup I was really excited to watch that and as soon as they weighed in this is why it's really important sometimes to, to wait till the weigh-in because I was looking at the, both their eyes and I'm like Frank Martin looks ready. Rivera looks, I don't want to say scared or fearful because I, I don't think that's true, but trepidation. And as soon as I saw his face, I was like, he's not going to win that fight. And I don't do that all the time, but every now and then I'll pop up and like, hmm, something's wrong with this guy. This guy. And his performance was flat and he didn't really sell out. He didn't try to really win. He was a bit tentative, you know, and Frank Martin boxed a great fight and that was a good fight. But, you know, Rivera, you know, you got to have it in here, man. You got to have the stuff in here to 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 go there and fight. You know, soul to soul. Basically, you got to go. You got to get in the trenches. You have to fight people like this at some point. I'm not saying you should go out there and try and fight them off the straight, but no, wait, box, box. But in patches, you're going to get sucked into a fight. And look, Matthias, his footwork is a bit clumsy, right? But it's actually really fast as well. At times, I'll I'll bring it into light with some footage and I'll show you because I want to talk about cutting the ring off a little bit which is a dying art all right it's the psychological pressure of cutting the ring off that can be um, a missing factor in a lot of people's game yeah you need to you need to step over and you need to get you know the anticipation you need to judge where your fighters are going and stuff or your opponents going all of that it's a very complex topic actually and very few fighters do it if any these days there are a couple I think but where I'm going with this is ultimately what you're trying to do when you cut the ring off is you want to get to your opponent so you can hit them, right? That's the, the main goal, uh, but well, or drain them mentally. And that's another part of being on them all the time. Margarito used to do that. He was just on you, you know? <laughs> He's like, get off me, man. But like, Matias can get to his opponent, all right? Benavidez is the same thing. They might not be able to cut the ring off like articulately, but they can get to their opponent and make them fight. And that's the point. I'm trying to make is he's going to be able to get to Rivera and I don't think Rivera's got enough firepower to keep him off or enough I say enough stamina he just looked like he was working really hard as I said at the beginning you know too hard too early again he boxed nicely he did what he had to do against someone that I thought was pushing 60 but he actually was 34 years old no disrespect to Lipinets he's uh, he's getting on he's probably going to retire soon but you know I know Matthias isn't a spring chicken but 
the way he fights and the way he can fight in the clinches and get those nasty little shots off. If you look at the Ponce knockout, right, he was going backwards. He was going backwards and his left foot was in the air. And this is part of the, the scientific video I'm making. And he, he landed off a shot going backwards and knocked him down and flew him back like he just hit him with like a 12-gauge a shotgun. <laughs> this is the kind of power this guy has. It's crazy. And anyway, look, that's that's it from me. I'm a bit excited because I love talking about boxing. I love talking and chatting to you guys. Let me know in the comments what you think about this fight. And let me know in the comments if you think Rivera is actually onto something about underpaying these fighters because that would be a hold up. But we'll see. We'll never know exactly because it's he said, she said. But anyway, I'm out. Peace. Boxing. I'm an artist. You give me a fucking tuber, I'll get you something out of it. Porque cuando tú estás seguro, I'm a terminator. I'm a terminator. I'm a terminator. I'm a terminator. De lo que tú das y tú eres, no le temes a los riesgos. Mahaley from Fajardo, Puerto Rico. Porque cuando tú estás seguro, I'm a machine. When you're sure what you know that you have, the skill that you have, then you take the fight. Porque cuando tú estás seguro. De lo que tú das y tú eres, no le temes a los riesgos. El orgullo de Baternillo, Subriel Matias. I'm a Terminator. Listen to me very carefully. I'm a terminator. I'm a terminator. I'm a terminator. I'm a terminator. Listen to me very carefully. Porque cuando tú estás seguro de lo que tú das y tú eres, no le temes a los riesgos. I'm a terminator. 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 There was a lot of risk in taking this fight. Why did you do it? Había mucho riesgo en esta pelea. ¿Por qué tomaste la pelea? Porque cuando tú estás seguro de lo que tú das y tú eres, no le temes a los riesgos. Is that when you're sure what you know that you have, the skill that you have, then you take the fight.